Welcome to the Influence and Inspire podcast, episode 20. And I'm delighted to say my guest today is Junior Ogunyemi, author, in- inspirational speaker and entrepreneur. Um, welcome, Junior. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is a, it's a real honour. Yes, it's definitely. Definitely. It's been, I've been trying to get you on this show for a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's good to have you on anyway. Oh, it's a pleasure. So, Junior, first of all, um, you started... Um, by launching a number of successful startups while you were still at university. Yes. Um, so, and, you've, and you were recognised for launching these startups. Um, but what was your favourite startup that you launched while you were at university? Um, do you know, it's, it's, it's so weird because I, I always set myself the goal uh, when I was setting up the businesses. Mm-hmm. I, I always wanted to get paid in something that I loved doing. Yeah. Um, hence, that's why I sort of I went into business. So, mm-hmm. I had a lot of passion for pretty much every every idea, and um, it was just about the the opportunity and the journey. Mm. Um, but if I had to pick, you know, one of the favorites, it would, it would probably be the the football coaching academy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it was actually one of the first, well, one of the first successful ventures, uh, and it's still running until today as well. So okay. it's been um, well over, I think. About 12, 13 years now. Oh wow! Um, and yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think it, it gives it gives me the the opportunity to get a bit of exercise in every weekend. It really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it gives me the opportunity to to help young people um, who come from various backgrounds, and you know they might not be engaged in school or they might not be engaged at home. But you know, give them a football, and you start to see their their talent blossom, mm-hmm. and I think that's probably one of the most rewarding things about it. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think probably the football coach academy is probably one of one of one of one of my earliest ones and one of my favourite ones. <laughs> okay, good, good. And at the age of twenty-one, you became a best-selling author out of the book "How to Be a Student Entrepreneur." Mm-hmm. Um, tell us a story about how that this book came about. So as um. You know, you always have it on your goal to one day write a book, mm-hmm. uh, don't we? Um, but I, I never anticipated it would be so early. But I was, I was basically at an event with um, various other entrepreneurs um, who, who were speaking. You had people like you know, Tony Robbins there and Alan Sugar, and mm-hmm. uh, and you know, listening to these people, you get really pumped up and excited. And I think I got a bit too overexcited because. <laughs> On my on my way out, somebody asked me to sign up for an author's course, yeah. and and I was just being a bit cheeky. I was just like, "No, I'm already an author. I'm fine. You know, I could, I've got my book already." And so they started saying, "You know, what what's the book called?" And and literally, I, I just graduated about the week before, mm-hmm. so I said, "It's called How to Be a Student Entrepreneur." Mm. Uh, and then I just basically started to just you know waffle about why I thought it should be in a book like this, really. Yeah. Um, and then they they took my business card and. Um, they gave it to a sister company of theirs, which is actually a publishing company. Mm-hmm. And then the, the director of the publishing company called me up the following Monday. And she said, no, are you Junior Ogunyemi? I'm like, yeah. And, and she said, uh, are you the author of How to Be a Student Entrepreneur? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah, I am. And, and then she just started basically asking me questions about the book. And then again, I was just giving my spiel in terms of what I thought should be in a book like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and then they loved the concepts. And um, I mean, to them, they were believing that you know, it was already written. Mm-hmm. So they're asking me questions like, you know, how many pages is it? And I said, oh, you know, it's about 100 or so pages. They're like, okay, that's good. You know, <laughs> how many chapters is that? I'm like, um, about nine chapters. They're like, yeah, you know, we expect about 12 usually. Yeah. Like, yeah, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, <laughs> just putting the finishing touches to it. Yeah, yeah. So, so lo and behold, I, I, they I got to the end of the conversation and they said, all right, if you put the finishing touches to the book and send it into us by the end of the month, mm-hmm. we'll look at it and if we like it, we'll go and publish it. Uh, and I said, yeah, no problem. <laughs> and I got off the phone thinking, Lord, help me. I, I need to write this book by the end of the month. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, I managed to do it. I spent one week turning my old bedroom into an office and the next three weeks just writing my art out mm-hmm. and um, got the book done on time, I submitted it. They loved it. Uh, about four or five months later, it was launched at London Business Startup Show mm. in front of about 3,000 people. 
and, um, and the rest is history. As I say, it's now available in five countries around the world. It, my career went through the roof, and mm. it's, it's really inspired many people since. That is that's an amazing story, and um, and Junior, how did you how did you have the uh, I don't want to say balls, but the the gumption <laughs> to to do to to kind of blag your way through, and I and I say blag, but you you knew what needed to be in the book. You knew yeah. what should be in the book, but how did you have the confidence to like carry that off? So it was, uh, I guess it was in two folds. Number one, it was confidence within myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I knew that, I mean, I knew that I could write the book mm -hmm. because for me, I didn't see it as a book. I just saw it as me sitting in front of somebody and t telling them everything that I know. Yeah. Um, and I can talk forever. So I was just <laughs> typing what I was saying, basically. Um, and I was doing lots of coaching anyway, so I, I, know, I knew that the principles I was going to share in the book was already worked because I tested, I done real life testing with, with other people's businesses mm -hmm. and, and getting results in my own businesses. So yeah, it was relatively easy to write because I knew that I knew what I was talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but just to sort of seize the opportunity, you yeah. know, in in real entrepreneurial fashion, mm -hmm. I think it's all about not having everything ready. Yeah. But, but knowing that, you know, you, you build your wings on the way there. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I think, I don't think I would have written the book if I didn't have that pressure, if I didn't put myself into that box. Yeah. I call it, you know, like going down a one-way street. You know, imagine when you're, when you're driving and you, you turn down the street and you know you're heading the wrong direction, but it's a one-way street. You can't go back now, so you just have to see it through mm. and you just keep going. Um, so you almost burn every other bridge and you just keep going. Mm -hmm. That's what I did to myself. And, and sometimes that's the, the that's the trick we have to play on ourselves in order to actually get things done, especially the things that we know we're supposed to get done. You just got to go through it and realize that you don't have a, a second option. You can't back out now. You have to make something happen. Yeah. And and under that type of pressure, that's where you really see sort of diamonds or are producing you produce your best work as well under the, under those type of constraints so mm. i was i was actually enjoying the challenge yeah yeah um I, I knew that i would enjoy the challenge and um because of my big mouth my my opportunity and my integrity was on the line as well mm. uh, and those are two things that i hold dearly you know yeah. you can't let opportunities go past that easily mm -hmm. uh, you only got one life you have to seize as many good opportunities as you can and uh integrity is everything if you say you're going to do something um, you have to go and deliver. That's that's one of my business principles. Mm -hmm. um, and I said I'll get the book in by the end of the month, and it, it's going to be an amazing book. So I had to produce my best quality work in that space of time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 just confidence in yourself and understanding that you know you you've actually through all your years of experience you've got this, um, and uh, also faith in the opportunity that this is the right opportunity. I mean, I grew up in church, and mm -hmm. so faith is not something that's new to me or mm -hmm. airy fairy it's uh it's something that i hold dear to yeah um and uh i i can see when i guess god's working mm -hmm. all his hands are working and, and opportunities are being carved out uh so i, I was just discerning that and, and i had belief that you know this opportunity is a good opportunity it's worth taking a risk on and uh, uh i should take it seriously and i did yes yes definitely definitely um junior you also advised schools about nurturing enterprising students is this something that the schools are quite receptive to yeah yeah now so more than ever mm -hmm. um because i think we're seeing uh, a generation of people who uh what was promised to them isn't actually being f fulfilled mm -hmm. and people losing faith in the education system yeah uh, since where you know there's that whole mantra of you you get a job you go to school, study hard, get a job, and then that's your job for life. Mm. And, and uh, we're not actually seeing that anymore. And even if you do get a job, it's not an, it's not good enough in the sense where it doesn't pay enough, mm -hmm. or it, and there's no opportunity for progression. Mm -hmm. So people are now turning to entrepreneurship as as a way out, or even if they do get a secure job, they want to have a side business. Yeah. Um, so what we're finding is that lots of students are coming out of the education system, but they're not equipped for that other side of things, or they're not equipped to to succeed in this new digital age or this mm. new uh, revolution that we have of entrepreneurs everywhere. So, um, I mean, it's a good problem for me because they call me in now and, and 
uh, I get to come in and, and engage the students through workshops, courses and seminars yeah. um, to spark their minds in terms of thinking about entrepreneurship and uh, how I, I did it and, and how I started out and, and any principles that I can share. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still think the education system has a long way to go, but to, to a degree, I guess, it's it's hard for them to actually implement entrepreneurial training because yeah. uh, even the business world is developing so fast. You know, the moment you start to teach kids about Facebook marketing and there's a new social media platform available, mm. uh, you have to keep rewriting that textbook for them. So uh, it, it, I, I do believe it's one of those things that just has to be learned by experience. But yeah. Uh, schools can do their part by bringing people like me in to at least spark the minds of people and, the, and, and let the young people know that there is another option. Mm-hmm. If you're not academically gifted or even if you are academically gifted, if you don't believe that there's going to be enough job security, you can create your own security. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I was, I was going to say, are you, are you an advocate of entrepreneurship as part of the curriculum or at least an option? But I think you've you've kind of said... You've kind yeah, of answered yeah, that in yeah. a way. Um, how far do you think we are away from that, though? Um, I think with the current structure of the education system, I'd, it's it's. Uh, I don't think it's going to ever change in mm-hmm. this current structure. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the sense where the 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 schools, the people teaching entrepreneurship in schools, mm-hmm. if they did have teachers teaching it. Some schools do. Yeah. Um, most of those, if they're doing it full time, they will probably not be entrepreneurs. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that brings an element of uh, it, it, it's, it's almost like a dis- disconnect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because it, I do believe it's something that's that's best learned, practiced, and uh, you know you have loads of lecturers that teach entrepreneurship from a textbook, and it's when you go out there in real life, it's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. And you can sit in an MBA class and talk about how to create multi-billion pound marketing strategies. Um, but how many of those lecturers, let alone the students, have actually gone out there and done it? Mm-hmm. Uh, the reality of entrepreneurship is completely different to the formal teaching of it. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've almost given up on relying on the education system mm-hmm. to teach entrepreneurship. I think entrepreneurship is best learned through... Um, you know, short courses and programs where you can pick up entrepreneurial skills, mm-hmm. um, but all, also mentoring from real life entrepreneurs, as in you're watching them on the job uh, while they're doing it and you're picking picking things up almost like an apprentice. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, the best experience is, the best teacher is your own experience. Sometimes you just have to go out there, do it, fail, and then through that you learn and you grow and I think that's actually part of the reason why I, I set up the academy, mm-hmm. uh, but like an entrepreneur academy where everyday people can come and develop entrepreneurial skills, yeah. connect, connect with each other and, you know, like-mindedness creates more like-mindedness. And mm-hmm. um, it's an environment where people feel safe to talk about their business, try their business out and, and just basically learn and grow as an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so it's, it's a, I think we're we're always going to be very far because of the way the current education system is is structured. And unless there's a big radical change in terms of foundation and, and what kids are marked on and, and how assessments are done, um, it's always going to be crippling for any entrepreneur to be in the education system for too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, just a bit more about the Entre Power Academy, which we, which you call it. So mm-hmm. um, how do we become part of the academy? Um, how do we join? How do we find out a bit more about your academy? Yeah, well, we do lots of um, non-member events and member events, but mm-hmm. we sometimes invite non-members anyway. But um, these are just like, you know, free seminars where people can come down, find out a little bit about what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's actually a sen- seminar in itself. So if anyone's interested in business in general and, mm-hmm. and they want to learn, um, they can do that. Um, but we, we also have uh, a free trial where people can come down um, and basically be a member of the academy for a month and mm-hmm. see how it helps their business, see what they're learning, see, uh, meet some of the other members and see what opportunities are in store. Mm-hmm. Um, and if people want to continue, then, then they can do. We've, we've made it as it's as accessible as possible in a sense where, um, you know, for the price of like a phone bill, a monthly mm-hmm. phone bill, people can become a member. 
Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, you don't necessarily need to have huge money to, to do it. Um, and I think that we're trying to go along with the message that we're giving to people is that you don't necessarily need to have loads of money to set up a business. You don't mm-hmm. have to be born a millionaire. Yeah. Everybody, everyday people can do this. And all you need is an idea and, and the self-belief. Um, and if you can do that, we'll give you all the rest of it. We'll give you the teaching, we'll give you the training, we'll upskill you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you learn from all the very best in the industry and how they did it. Uh, and you, and we'll give you that support network and accountability every single month to make sure that as you're growing your business, you never, ever feel alone. Because it, it can be quite scary and daunting. And most people, yeah. the moment they say, hey, I'm going to go set up a business, they can't really say that to their friends and family because everyone's going to look at them and laugh at them. Mm. Uh, but you know, there's a there's, we have we've created an environment where people actually support each other and everybody's of the same mindset. So it's it's, it's far more encouraging, and, and that's where we see a lot of our entrepreneurs do succeed. And we sort of go against the grain of you know 90% of businesses fail. Where we flipped it around, where most of our businesses actually succeed. Okay. Um, and, and I do believe it's because of the environment that, that we've created. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, we, we, we allow people to, to basically head to our website. It's uh, entrepower.co.uk. Mm-hmm. And, and there they can book a free trial. Um, someone from the team calls them up and asks them a few questions about their business. And pretty much that's it. Okay. And the, to be a member of the academy, do you actually have to have a business? Or can you be someone who's thinking about starting a business? You can definitely be someone who's... Uh, thinking about starting um do you know it, sometimes it's it's even better because you come with like a, a blank canvas yeah. when you haven't actually started so all the new ideas are literally new to you and you can start to formulate it what we find a lot is that people who've been working on their business and they've been struggling once they come to the academy and they learn they're like oh my days i've been doing it wrong all this time <laughs> but then they have yeah. to go back to the drawing board but you know it's good it's, it's rather I'd rather they learn that late now than later on and yes. spend more money on their business that's not not really going anywhere so at least they can see how to set things up properly mm-hmm. um but you know even if you haven't got a business by virtue of you being in that environment you naturally come out with a business mm. um or you 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 meet other people and you could be you know like co-founders and things like that so it's um it's definitely an environment for people who either you have a business or you don't have a business as long as you know that you want to become an entrepreneur mm-hmm. um, we will give you all the resources to, to become the best version of yourself as, as an entrepreneur yeah okay so junior um could you what would be the three key bits of advice you would give someone who's interested in becoming an entrepreneur um cool so the first one is develop skills keep mm-hmm. developing skills never ever ever begrudge time or money you spend developing new skills mm-hmm. um I mean, the skills that you learn at primary school got you to secondary school. The skills that you learn at secondary school got you to higher education. The skills you learn at higher education get you, gets you the job. Mm-hmm. The skills you learn on the job gets you the promotion. There's, there's, a, there's a universal principle there. The more skills I learn, the better I, I, I get and the mm-hmm. more I progress. Uh, it's similar like that in business as well. You learn marketing skills, um, selling skills, networking skills, how to pitch to investors. All of these are things that can definitely be learned. Mm-hmm. Um, so keep developing skills read books go to seminars and mm-hmm. uh, do whatever you can to be to better yourself uh, the second thing i'll say is network mm-hmm. network 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 because i i am i can testify that i am where i am because i've stood on the shoulders of giants and, mm-hmm. uh, and i still help other people up till today because uh, there's a there's a key principle to networking people people buy from those that they know like and trust mm-hmm. and the, the the stronger your network is um, the better and, and and a strong network isn't about you know having millions of followers on Facebook or mm-hmm. or, or, or millions of people on on LinkedIn or something like that on Twitter. Yeah. It's actually about having people that you can really connect with. So sometimes it's it's a case of quality over quantity. It's about having strong relationships and you know, people that you can call upon for funding, mm-hmm. um, people that you can call upon for favors and things like that because you've got that quality relationship between the two of you. Yeah. Um, so definitely build up your network. It, it, it'll, it can be a very strong competitive advantage just because of who you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and the third thing I'd say is keep doing what inspires you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are the heartbeat of the business, you are the engine of the business, the inspiration that you have is what keeps the engine oiled. Uh, and, you know, sometimes even if you realize the business isn't getting anywhere, you still get out of bed and you still give it 110% because you're doing what inspires you. 
Um, I mean, even even sometimes in business, there's areas of the business that you can work on that might not be you know as inspiring. Some people set up a business in like you know the fashion industry because they're really interested in glamour and fashion, but mm-hmm. then realize that they're sending out lots of invoices and, and booking models and all this other stuff, which could be boring to them. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just encourage those type of people to to outsource that work that you don't like mm-hmm. and get hands on with the work that you do love because you're better at the ones that the, the area of the business that you love. Mm-hmm. So just stick to what inspires you and, and play to your own strengths and your own passions. Uh, because you know, that's when you always give it 110%. Uh, and, and don't be afraid to bring on a team who's also inspired in other areas so you complement each other. So, so yeah, those will be my, my three things in summary. It will be develop your skills, build your network, and, and stay inspired. Well, thank you. That's some great nuggets, nuggets of information and knowledge for us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jin, you, you've won plenty of awards and accolades, actually too many to mention, and I really <laughs> do need too many to mention, so I'm not going to try. Are there any awards that you think that you would like to be nominated for? And when I say that, I mean an award that best is best aligned with what you do and the service you provide. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's funny you ask that because um, it's probably about a few months ago I was talking with my wife mm-hmm. um, and uh, I, was, I was talking about some of the, um, the Queen's Awards and I know that there's an Enterprise one. Mm. Um, and I thought, you know, that would be really cool. I'd love that award. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, I think on the bucket list as, as well, to so probably get a Nobel Peace Prize at one point. I don't know what I have to do for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, how many papers I have to write or who I have to shake hands with. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. but I think that would be a really cool honor. Um, but I, I, I do like the idea of the Queen's Enterprise Awards because mm-hmm. I know it's particularly for my mum. Uh, that will bring the the biggest smile on her oh. face. Um, and she she and then my dad moved over here when I was you know very young, probably mm-hmm. about two years old. Yeah. Um, and they just love to see their children dominating and doing well in this country and and doing well, um, seizing the opportunities that they've they've worked hard to create for us here over here. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and I know like an, an invitation from the queen would be like send my mom to the moon and back <laughs> yeah just to see her face yes. that'll be yeah that would be really cool that would be a picture mm. um so junior just talking about your parents actually because i did want to touch on how you um became an entrepreneur and how you got into the you had that kind of drive and, and a lot of this comes from your parents so i just wanted to know how much impact did your parents have on on your success today uh, massively, you know, I, I've learned recently that, well, over the years that a lot of success is really down to culture, mm. uh, like the successful companies, they have their own culture and that's what drives their success. You know, you talk about you know, the culture at Apple and, and like yeah. Innocence Movies and all these other companies. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's what leads them to, to, to being so audacious and ambitious and, and doing amazing things. I think it's like that with, with organizations, with groups, with schools, with families as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the culture you create in your family, um, it really sets the tone and, and the expectation of, of what's to come in the future. And my my dad in particular, he created a culture of, you know, it's just expected that you do well. You should be at the top of your game. Mm-hmm. Not not in a pressurized environment, yeah. um, but in, in, in a sense where if you're going to do something, don't strive to be the average person in the class. Mm. always strive to be the best yeah. even if even if you know you haven't got the natural talent at least strive to be the best you're mm-hmm. going to always end up a lot further than sh- striving to be average mm-hmm. so you know coming home from school and saying yeah i got a c grade it, it wasn't really something to to celebrate yeah um, mm-hmm. coming home and saying i got an a grade was something that was expected mm-hmm. uh, so i think that sense of expectation really set the bar because it as a as a child we're so it becomes normal to, to think that, you know, I, I should get an A grade and you start to believe in yourself. Yeah. It, it becomes normal regardless of what everyone else is getting. Mm-hmm. You just feel like I'm from this family and we should be doing well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in the most humblest of sense. And, and I think on my mom's side, she, she always created a supportive environment mm-hmm. um, where, again, she never really forced me to do anything. And she was always supportive of me uh, exploring entrepreneurship and, and being quite creative. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, that can be very, 
it's, I think it's quite different, yeah. especially for most African parents, mm -hmm. uh, because you know you're, they 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 have an idea of what job security looks like, mm. um, and they want you to to do the best way that they know how, although it might not work for you, mm -hmm. but you know that they, they advise you on the best way that they know how, and and my mom really had to sort of let that go and just trust that what I was doing was, was going to work. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so she gave me the freedom to try out things. She gave me money and then she invested in some of my businesses. And mm -hmm. you know, there's no, there's no greater sense of support than someone who does that. Mm -hmm. Um, she gave me words of encouragement. Um, she, she never started handing job applications out for me, <laughs> although she would, <laughs> she would have loved to. She, yeah. she trusted me. Mm -hmm. uh, she trusted that eventually I'm gonna I'm gonna get it right. Although some businesses were succeeding, some businesses might be failing. Mm -hmm. And her support and her belief in me um, encouraged me to keep going. And um, and and I think ultimately my my whole family they've been generally all supportive. But I think one of the the greatest things I can thank them for is my my Christian faith mm -hmm. because that really did play a big part in especially in the tough times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, knowing that there's a force that's greater than you, mm -hmm. that's smarter than you, that's stronger than you, that you can depend on, uh, it really does give you a lot of balls to go and try new things. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it gives you a lot of direction as well. So some of the, uh, I write loads of business courses and programs, and, and honestly, some of these ideas, mm -hmm. I would not know where they come from <laughs> in the divine source because. Yeah. Um, it's it, it is quite remarkable, and even the, the books that I write, and 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 sometimes even what I stay and say on stage, and like I would not be able to repeat it. It's like something just takes over me and, yeah. and starts to speak on my behalf, and that's when it really connects with the soul of people, and and mm -hmm. that's when it really um, opens up people's hearts and minds. And and I do think that it, that is a force that's greater than me, and mm -hmm. and, and I only put it down to the the relationship that my my parents and my family helped me develop with God. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably the best gift that they ever gave me. And, and again, that is also going down to creating the culture in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's, I think those principles growing up has really nurtured me. Um, and, and I've, I've had amazing, amazing role models close at home, like my, my older brother as well. Mm -hmm. um, he, he basically, paved the way for me in terms of being an entrepreneur okay. and um and he's also been supportive in every sense of the word as well mm. okay excellent excellent so junior i've had the pleasure of hearing you speak live um and been very inspired so thank you for that um, where can people hear you speak and um, when's your next speaking engagement where people can come and see you and hear you um so i i, I speak probably like two or three times a week at different events. Okay. Um, a lot of them are private events. Right. But um, a lot of them are also open to the, to the general public. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you go to my website, juniorobinyemi.com, mm -hmm. or if you follow me on Twitter or on Facebook, which is, I, I believe it's just JR underscore entrepreneur on Twitter and same on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I do post out some of these events, but um, you're guaranteed to see me at every event at the Under Power Network. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, if anybody wants to come down um, and, and hear me speak live or learn a few things about uh, entrepreneurship and, and take their business to the next level, I'll be more than happy to, to answer questions and share with people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I do a lot of local events as well all over, all over the place. So, yeah, yeah I, I say the best bet would be to either follow me on social media and, and just keep it, keep it, your eyes peeled and or head to Entrepower Academy and... Um, come down and book a free ticket to one of our open events mm -hmm. sounds good um before i let you go junior um just tell me what you've what's what's planned for your future what's happening in the future for junior um i'm probably going to run for president I don't <laughs> <laughs> why not <laughs> it's, um, do you know I've, I've always got loads of ideas yeah uh, and one of the one of the hardest things that i've had to teach myself is you know discipline mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you, know, you can't do everything at the same time yeah. So although I'm working on, on different business projects, I, I want to get the business projects off the ground as fast as possible so I can keep moving on to new things and, mm -hmm. and, and different markets um, and different opportunities. So um, I've, I've got 
I've got an idea of what I'll be working on next. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's uh, it's all in the pipeline now. I can't say too much. Okay. Um, but I'm I'm very interested in the property market. Right. Uh, and I'm very interested in, in, in technology as well. Right. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, these are, these are areas where, uh, I've got a few ideas that I'm, I'm looking to sort of run businesses in and, and really impact people's lives. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's all about solving problems in society. It's, yes. Yes. You know, yes. That's what business is. You mm-hmm. see loads of problems in societies I mean, you, as an entrepreneur, I believe it's, it's our responsibility to come in and provide solutions that are viable. Mm-hmm can uh, benefit the lives of the users and um, financially support us so we can keep pumping back into solving new problems. So, yeah, yeah. so that's my goal, looking out for what the next big problem is. For me, that's just the next big opportunity. And um, and yeah, setting up another business in that, I, I don't think I would ever retire from, from setting up businesses because mm-hmm. it's all in my head. It's all ideas. Yeah. Know, your mind doesn't stop. Yeah. So, so yeah. Okay, well, uh, it's been enlightening speaking to you today, Junior, and and you've t- you've told us a lot of important things that we need to be thinking about if we want to be entrepreneurs, etc. Um, if anyone wants to contact you you personally and ask you any questions, what's the best way of getting in contact with you? Is it email address or is it social media? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you can email my team straight away, and, and they'll they'll probably give a much quicker response than I can anyway. Right, okay. Um, and it's uh, info at entrepower. That's E N T R E P O W E R. So info at entrepower dot co dot uk. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, just say you've got a message for Junior, and, and they'll forward it over to me. Yeah. Um, or maybe when when I'm in the office, I'll just jump on the computer and and uh, reply back to you. Um, I'm also on social media. I'm, I'm very accessible on social media. I'm on Instagram. That's JR underscore entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Same thing on Twitter. And Facebook is just Junior Ogunyemi. Um, so you, you'll see me. Um, and yeah, say hi. Throw any questions. Uh, let's connect. Mm-hmm. Excellent, Junior. Um, thanks for spending your time with me today. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank and, you for having me. And good luck with all your businesses in the future. Thank you. Really appreciate it.